All right. Happy Sabbath, new life. Happy Sabbath. I hope you all fared okay after the storm blew through yesterday and late into the evening. At our house, we lost our power, and then it's still not on. I mean, maybe it's on by now. I don't know. But <laughs> we, we made for an exciting time finding all the flashlights in the middle of the dark. So that was fun, fun, fun. But hopefully everything is all right at your homes. Um, hello to everybody watching online. So glad you're joining us, whether you're here in person or away. A couple of announcements. First of all, a huge, huge thank you for the amazing event and all the hands that helped for our ice cream social last week. It was an incredible turnout. I don't know if anybody took time to count. I was just enjoying the chatting and forgot to do that. But by my quick little rough count, it seemed like we had about 50-ish visiting families and, and people from not affiliated with our church, which is fantastic. Great, um, a great turnout. Um, the weather held out for us. We had a couple sprinkles and then totally fine. So it was an amazing event. Thank you so much for everyone lending a hand, pitching in, just being welcoming. And when you saw someone walk up, you just went and said hi, made connections. Fantastic. So fantastic. So can't wait to do it again, but thank you all for helping to make that event such a success. Um, also, we have potluck today, so if you don't have lunch plans, please stay afterwards. Um, so we'll be pushing the chairs out of the way, setting up some tables, and just fellowshipping and, and spending time in community with one another. So I hope you can stay for that. A couple of um, bigger announcements. We've got um, the Life Group, the Friday Night Life Group. They are meeting next Friday, October 9, 7.30, and then taking a break because their book is finishing up. So if you've been um, a part of that life group, the Friday Night Life group, they are going to be taking a break after this next October 9th. Um, and if you've been wanting to join but haven't been able to, well, hey, they're about to start something new in a little bit. So you'll be able to join in and dive right in with the new, with, with the new um, discussion. So FYI. Um, we have... The Children's Choir. I wanted to make sure I didn't forget any of my details. Children's Choir, they performed last week, and it was amazing. They did such a great job. So thank you to Sabrina for helping to lead that. Um, they are going to be performing again uh, the last Sabbath of October, the 29th of October. So parents, um, if your kids were involved or they weren't involved but you want them to be, the very first practice will be next Sabbath right after church. Um, and if you didn't receive an email about what song they're singing, et cetera, please see me afterwards to make sure I can get you connected. But um, yeah, next week, very first practice again for the new song for the end of the month. Woohoo! And then finally, uh, really excited that we're going to be teaming up with Samaritan's Purse and Operation Christmas Child to do um, shoe boxes, thanks to Alvina, who has ordered boxes for us. So we actually have 100 of the Samaritan's Purse sort of pre-printed shoe boxes that will be available for us. So if you would like to take some home, fill them up with toys, um, toiletries, uh, games, school supplies, that type of thing. Pack up a shoe box or two or three or four. It's a great activity for kids. And uh, bring them back. We're gonna, be, we're gonna be sending them off. So we have 100 available. We can start distributing them October 15. Um, but if you know you already, like yes, we are, we're gonna want some. See me after church, and I'll just make sure you claim one of the you claim some of the 100, and we'll make sure we have them set aside for you. And then we'll be bringing them back to church November 12, and that gives us a little bit of wiggle room to make sure <laughs> everyone has enough time to bring them back before they have to be sent off to the local collection site. So starting October 15, you can grab boxes. Of course, if you've got shoe boxes laying around at home and you want to fill those up, totally fine, use those. But we do have 100 here at our church to be able to use. So. It's a fantastic um, outreach opportunity, spreading amazing joy and the good news of the gospel all around the world. So it's a great ministry to be a part of, and we're grateful to Aldvina, who has organized those boxes for us. And that is our announcements. Um, let's bow our heads and open up in, in prayer. God, we thank you for another Sabbath, day set aside where we can pause and recharge and worship and connect with you, God. Be with us as we worship, as we praise you, um, and fellowship together, God. We thank you for this church, and we thank you for this day. We love you. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Jesus is always waiting there no matter how many times we fail. I think that this song is great for what has been happening with Hurricane Ian. And just um, that 
I mean, I can't even imagine what the people are feeling in Fort Myers or the other places in Florida that just were decimated. Or any time a tragedy like this happens, when you lose everything that you have that's of this world, right? It still, it still hurts a lot, even though we know our foundation should be in Christ and is in Christ as Christians. Sometimes that, um, that foundation feels a little shaky when the, the, um, the physical structures actually break down, but we need to hold on and know that God's love and everything that he's promised us is still there. That did not break. is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus cause he's never let me down he's faithful through chance So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my
reformed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness fails, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. No, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Come up here and help me. Yes, you can. Come on, come on. There's some hand motions. Yeah, we're going to do them. You have to do deep. You don't even have to do them by yourself. Just come High, up. Stand right here. Come long, on. Yeah, right. you got it. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. All right, everybody else, stand up. We're going to get some uh, exercise here. Okay, 
dad, you stay up here too and you do the motions. He's going to do them with you. Don't worry. Just voices. Love is deep. Your love is high. Your love is long. Your love is wide. Everybody. Your love is deep. Love is high. Thank you, kids. You can go back to your seats now. Thank you, everyone in the church. Wasn't that nice? That was, that was as close as we're going to get to what David said is singing and dancing mm -hmm. in praise of God. <laughs> step by step, but hey. There's something about putting your hands up that makes you feel like you're closer to God. It's like when you're on the top of a mountain. This song is our um, prayer song this morning. And um, I know that there's probably a lot of hurts out there. And I hope there's some praises that we can share too. Um, I wanted to just um, share one that, that's a little pretty sad for my family is that we lost my brother Larry last weekend and I know I had said something about him before he had cancer and but anyway he was free of cancer for the most part but his heart was broken so you can really die of a broken heart anyway just pray for our, my family at funerals this coming weekend so just prayers for that.
Can you put it on, Randy? It is on. It there is on go. now. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, church family. Happy it's Sabbath. wonderful to worship with you. And um, I got a text message from Chris Glenn this, uh, this last week, and he asked specifically for prayer. Um, he's been in the hospital, and we've missed him, and um, he's had some surgery and, need, and needs our prayer. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, 1208. <laughs> anyway, I just um, want to lift Jose up in prayers and Terrence. They got hit with COVID this week. Jose's doing better, but she's still not doing her best. Not the Jose that I know. You know, today's potluck. She'd be here bringing stuff and everything. So I just lift her up in prayer. I want to say my grandson, he's out of the hospital. As I told you last week, I had a grandson, and he was in the hospital for a few days, about nine extra days. And uh, he's out. My daughter's out. They're doing well. They now have a family of four. <laughs> Amen. And pray also for the people in Florida and South yeah. Carolina. It's really, it's really horrible because I was just talking with Jessica, and I think that the hurricane was supposed to go in a different direction. When it hit Fort, My Fort Myers, wasn't that somewhat off course? Does anybody know? And, but anyway, we just need to pray for those people. And if we can do something financially or whatever, you know, there's Adventist Community Services, the Red Cross. There are a lot of organizations that are involved in helping you know, what's going on down there. If we can't go down there physically, you know, let us find ways to help in some kind of way. I would like to say thank you for everyone who helped me last week when I fall. <laughs> I didn't broken off. I was in the hospital, but everything was okay. But the only problem is I didn't eat ice cream. <laughs> I think you need to make another ice cream festival. <laughs> and I promise I will not play nothing. <laughs> thank you. I'm thankful that my parents are visiting us. Not so thankful that they got COVID on the way here. Uh, so, big bummer, but they're getting better. Uh, I need prayers for my siblings and me to make a decision. And my mom, scare, is at the point now where she needs something permanent. It's a tough decision, <laughs> very emotional. Um, three of us, three different thoughts, and... Uh, we need to come up with the conclusion um, in the next week or so. So prayers that we can make the right thing for her. Good morning, uh, church family. and my daughter was there and they got hit where she was staying the retreat center they got hit but everything around them was basically trashed they only got lucky because they were in a brick building so she came back home safely we thank God and then this week uh, it hit Florida luckily my in-laws were not in the house when it hit but their house got leveled completely. So giving thanks to God again for that. And uh, so, uh, and then we have, uh, my daughter has a friend who out of the blues, her kidneys failed. She's, you know, just doing fine. And then all of a sudden it's an emergency. They say your kidneys are failing. And uh, I think failing fast. Uh, so they were able to stabilize her. And uh, she went into surgery yesterday and uh, she's recovering. She asked for prayer, so um, bring it before us. Uh, remember in your prayers. Her name is uh, J Bow. Uh, thank you.
Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, you've heard the prayer requests and the praises. We thank you that you're there with us through all of it. We pray for healing for those who are in the hospital or out of the hospital, for those who are hurting with emotional stress, or financial stress, physical, all of those. And we pray for those who have been deeply affected by the hurricane. We praise you for new life. We praise you for healing. We know that healing will come. We just thank you for that in advance to heal Jose, to heal Hans's parents, and to heal the little girl with the um, kidney problems, and to heal all those others that have been broken. And we just thank you so much for being here today in this community of love and fellowship. We can support each other, and just let you live out your life through us or that the Holy Spirit might be able to live through us a little bit better after we've been here today. Thank you for letting us come to you at any time with any burden or with anything on our hearts. And we thank you for caring for us like the little sparrow. Thank you, Lord. Amen. is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh come to the altar the father's arms are Precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, 
for the children's story. So kids, come on up. And I need your help collecting offering and any tie that you see. I need your help to collect, collect. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's so great to hear cheerful voices. Well, have I got a story for you today. But first, who lives in the corner of the Cameron family garage? It's Murray. Murray the grasshopper. And what is Murray's favorite thing to do in the whole wide world? Hop and 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 hop. Because he loves, he loves it. To hop because he is a grass hopper. Well, Murray was hanging out in the corner of the Cameron family garage in his usual favorite spot on top of his favorite little cushion, and he was listening. He was listening because outside he could hear the wind was picking up outside of the garage, and he was wondering what in the world was going on. Did you guys have a windy day at your house yesterday? Windy, windy, were your trees going like this? like Super windy. Well, Murray could hear the wind, and he was very, very curious what was going on out there. But he really, 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 really wanted to go outside and see what was going on. Whoa, hey, man. Spoilers. Whoa. No. Dad, it was not the plan, changing tactics. Okay, so Murray could not wait to go outside, but he had to stay inside because after all, how big are grasshoppers really? Super, super small. And if you and I went outside on a windy day, yeah, we'd go like, woohoo, it's windy. But for a grasshopper, might be pretty, pretty windy for a little grasshopper. Murray had to stay inside, but oh, he really wanted to go outside. It was really hard. And so he hopped out of his little cozy corner. Hop, 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 closer to the main big garage door. Hop, 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 a little bit more. Hop, hop, hop. Oh, I can hear it out there. It seems like it might be interesting. I really want to get outside. Really, 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 really. And he saw the little opening right under the garage door where that little like weather strip thing has worn away and the Camerons really should replace it, but we haven't yet. And he wiggled under the garage door and he was outside on the driveway. And as soon as he got outside of the garage, that wind whipped, and he went, wah, whoa, whoa, that wind is crazy. 
But he hopped over and he found himself a little quiet corner next to a bush and decided to watch. And he saw the leaves swirling around and the sticks flying off the trees. And he thought, whoa, this is crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So then he wiggled himself back into the garage. But when he went back into the garage, there was a problem. There was a problem. He couldn't see. The garage was dark, pitch black. Now, I don't know about your garage, but the Cameron's garage has stuff in it. Does anybody else have stuff in their garage? Yeah. Would you like to walk around in your garage in the dark, dark, like with not being able to see anything? No, no I wouldn't either. No, I don't. Bugs and things and stuff. Like, woo, you want to turn a light on. So Murray, Murray walked, got in there and he went, oh, it's dark. I can't see. Now, grasshoppers may have good eyesight, but not that great when it's super, super dark. And he's like, oh, man, I'm feeling a little nervous, a little bit nervous. True, true. Your eyes do not make... Like, they are not automatic flashlights, but wouldn't that be handy if your eyes could be flashlights and you just go click, click, and then all of a sudden, choo, you could see. But Murray was in the garage, and he was feeling a little bit scared because it was dark in there, and he could not see anything. And he got his little knees and his little legs a wiggling. But from his cozy corner across the other side, he saw a light that clicked on. Do you have these at your house, too? Yeah, he saw a light click on. Now, this is a grown-up, or this is like a, a, a human-sized flashlight, right? Yeah, well, thankfully, Murray's family has, has oh, er, thankfully, Murray's family has grasshopper-sized flashlights. But that was Murray's dad shining a flashlight into the garage so Murray could see where he needed to go and get back home. And Murray found himself back at home, and he's like, whoa! I was kind of scared. I was a little bit scared. But his dad reminded him that when you're scared, someone is always with you. Even if you feel alone, even in the dark when you can't see anything, someone is with us no matter what. And who is that? God is with us. And it reminded Murray of a Bible story he knew. And maybe you know this one too. The story of Jesus with his disciples out on a boat. And what happens? What happens to that boat? A big, giant storm comes up. Now, these are all fish. Like, some of Jesus' disciples are fishermen. They're probably used to being out on a boat in the middle of a storm. But this storm was so big that they were all scared, right? Every single one of them. Or terrified. Good adjective. Terrified. And what was Jesus doing? Was Jesus also scared? Curled up in a corner going, oh, I'm so scared. He was asleep, right? Sleeping away. And the disciples go up, Jesus, Jesus, wake up, wake up, wake up. The storm, it's so scary. And Jesus stands up and he holds out his hand and he says, peace, be still. And then what Murray remembered about that Bible story was what Jesus says afterwards. He turns to his disciples and says, why were you afraid when I was with you? And that is what Murray remembered, that even though he's feeling a little bit nervous in that dark, that he doesn't have to be afraid because who is with us? God is with us. And when he's with us, no matter what is happening, even if you need a flashlight, you don't have to be afraid because God is with us. You can go back to your seats, hopping like a grasshopper, perhaps. I love that story of Jesus in the boat, sleeping. 
Disciples are terrified. So descriptive of so many of our lives. <laughs> Lord, we need peace. Amen. We need the peace of Jesus. Amen. Peace be still. That's a good message. I really appreciate that children's story. Peace be still. Storms of life. And we literally have had storms. And people need much help. Need much help, too. You know, I, you know, I can't say I can't imagine it because, you know, we have shared the story. My family and I were in a tornado that flipped our trailer over when my dad was stationed in the Air Force, and somehow we all survived. We destroyed everything we had. My dad was planning on retiring that time. He had to stay in another year. So I, I, I can't somewhat imagine it, what it's like to lose everything. And my, my thoughts and prayers are with his people because even though we are not to attach ourselves to the things of this world, we still create memories with family. We still have pictures, you know, whether on a cell phone or we like myself, I'm old, you know, I've got, I've got pictures in boxes. And <laughs> Randy, you're laughing, you do too, and Terry, you do too. Some of you all know what I'm talking about. Some of the young people are like, what is he talking about, pictures in boxes? But um, there's a lot of memories that people have, and it's just traumatic to not be able to go home to your house when the storm has happened, it's, it's got to be very, very difficult to be unmoored. Uh, grateful for last week's ice cream social. I thought it went really, really, really well. Huh? We were blessed. I agree. And you know the thing about it? If we had a head weather like this last week, <laughs> all bets would have been off. It wouldn't have been happening. We did get a little rain, but it always, it just seemed to hold up. You get a little drizzle, and it just hold up. And so I thank God that we were able to have it last week and get to meet people, meet some of our neighbors. And I like that we're going to be doing this on a regular basis and getting to know our neighbors, you know, because we want to know our neighbors, and we want our neighbors to know us, right? We really, really do. Before I begin with a word of prayer, I just want to, and before I begin, I'd like to start with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Father in heaven, I want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to open your word, Lord. I pray that as, as we look in your word, that you will have something for each one of us, Lord, that speaks to our hearts, speaks to our needs, speaks to our place where we're situated right now spiritually. We pray, dear Father in heaven, as I say these things, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to read uh, this afternoon from uh, the Gospel of Acts. Uh, I'm going to look at chapter 11. And I'm going to be reading through the first 18 uh, verses. And it says in Acts chapter 11, beginning at verse 1, the apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. Verse 2, so when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him. Get this, the Jewish believers, the circumcised believers, these are the non-Gentile believers. The circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of an uncircumcised man." And ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter had to do some explaining, right? What are you doing as a Jewish man uh, associating with Gentiles? So Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a, a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it, and I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill, and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it, that is the sheet, was pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me 
from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. Verse 12, the Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. The Spirit is important, isn't it? The Spirit is important because without the Spirit, there are a lot of things we wouldn't do. Let's just be honest. We'd be afraid to do. We'd be hesitant to do. But it says, the Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house, an unclean man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all of your household will be saved. Amen. Amen. And I think about this Gentile who God spoke to through a vision, right? Powerful. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. At the beginning, where was that at? That was back in Acts, right, when the Holy Spirit was poured out at Pentecost? It says the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit came upon them as it had on us at the beginning. The Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles like it did on us on the beginning when we were waiting in Jerusalem. Remember, Jesus told them at the end of the Gospel of Luke, At the end of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus told the disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit was poured out. And then it says, then I remembered. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? Talking to church people now. You're telling the the circumcised followers of Jesus, who was I to stand in the way? Verse 18, and when they heard this, they had no further objections. And praise God, saying, so then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. Amen. Amen. Even the Gentiles were able to be granted repentance that leads to life. How do we get here in this story? I want you to understand this story, verse 11, chapter 11 is truncated. You want to see the long, drawn-out explanation, you read Acts chapter 10. Because Luke goes into more detail about what was going on there. And one of the things that Luke tells us in Acts chapter 10 is that Cornelius had a vision. It said about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It says about (laughs) 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And in that vision, he saw an angel. An angel telling him to go and find Simon Peter, who was staying at the home of Simon the Tanner in Joppa. Now, Joppa might be familiar to you if you remember the story of Jonah, because it was in Joppa that Jonah got on a boat headed for Tarshish, trying to get away from the calling that God had laid on his life. He was uncomfortable. (laughs) He was uncomfortable. He had not learned to become comfortable with being uncomfortable yet. And so he's on his way to Tarshish and uh, and, 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 and Joppa. But here is uh, a Cornelius who has had this vision of an angel. And the angel says, Cornelius, your prayers and the good deeds that you have done have been heard by God. And I want you to take men and go to where Peter is staying in Joppa. And uh, so that you can hear what Peter has to say. And so after the angel left, we're told in the scriptures that uh, Cornelius sent men to Joppa to go and see Peter. Now, as these men are headed to go see Peter at Joppa, where he's standing, staying by the sea, we are told that Peter himself went into a vision. It says that Peter went into a vision himself around noontime, and he had this vision. And in this vision, let me tell you something. He had actually gone upstairs on the roof 
Because it says he was hungry. He wanted something to eat, and up on the roof would be dried vegetables. It would be dried fruits and stuff to eat. And so uh, uh, Peter had gone up on the roof to eat, but when he went up on the roof to eat, we're told that he went into a trance. Peter went into a vision, and when Peter went into this vision, it said it was filled, this vision, there was a large sheet that came down from the four corners of heaven. It said it was filled with all kinds of four-footed animals. There might have been some pigs in there, you know, as well as reptiles and birds. And Peter hears a voice that tells him to get up, Peter, kill, and eat. Peter rejects the command. Peter says, Lord, I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. Now, I want you to know this is not a Bible verse for, uh, you know, for you to eat anything you want. Because what it says here, it's a vision about the Gentiles is what it's about. The voice speaks to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. After this happens three times, the sheet is taken back up to heaven. Peter is wondering about the meaning of this vision. And about that time, the people who had left Cornelius' house arrive at the home of Simon the Tanner. The men are standing outside at the gate who have been sent by Cornelius, and they're wanting to know if Simon Peter is at the house of Simon the Tanner. And the Spirit speaks to Peter. Because a lot of times we won't move, you know, on our own volition, because sometimes we're uncomfortable. But the Spirit can help us to be comfortable learn to be comfortable in being uncomfortable. And so the Spirit speaks to Peter, and he is moved, and Peter goes downstairs to meet these men who have come for him to ask him to go and see Cornelius, this Roman soldier, this God-fearing man who is respected by the Jewish people. And I think that's important to know because most of the Roman soldiers did not like uh, Jewish people. They were anti-Semitic. They were anti-Jewish. And so it says this man, Cornelius, was a respecter of Jewish people, and so, uh, 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 and so at this point, uh, the men come to uh, Peter. He meets with them. And Peter, moved by the Holy Spirit, decides to go to Caesarea, where, uh, where Cornelius is living. So, uh, uh, and by the way, I want you to understand now this distance between Caesarea Maritima and Joppa is about 30 miles. This is not Caesarea Philippi, but this is Caesarea Maritima. So Caesarea Maritima is about 30 miles north of Joppa. And so they make their way there, and it is about a 10-hour walk. But that's what they did in those days. They walked. That wasn't unusual. When I didn't have a car, I walked. I might walk three or four miles sometimes to get to my destination when I was growing up. And so they arrive at the home of Cornelius, and Cornelius has called together his relatives and his close friends to meet Peter. They want to hear the message that Peter has to give. And as Peter enters the house of Cornelius, we are told that Cornelius falls down at the feet of Peter. And Peter tells him to get up because he is a man just like Cornelius. And once again, Peter goes fully, once Peter goes fully into the house, he sees a large gathering of people in his home. Peter's upbringing in Jewish law had taught him not to associate with Gentiles. Has our upbringing taught us not to associate with certain people? Just fill in the blank. Some of the people that we're uncomfortable with associating with. I don't need to name them. You know what they are. I don't need to spell them out. You know what they are. And so the Spirit moves Peter to go in and meet these Gentiles who want to hear the message of the gospel. That's why Cornelius has sent for Peter. And the Spirit moves Peter to go and associate with these Gentiles because he's learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I'm sure he's not totally at home. I mean, this is something new for Peter. And he goes into the house to meet Cornelius and his friends and family he had moved to the place of learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I want to say, as human beings, most of us live in the place of being uncomfortable when it comes to new things and meeting new people and having different experiences. I think of a man by the name of Carl Alambi. Carl Alambi was a 
a guy who always had aspirations of being a, a, a medical doctor. He wanted to be a medical doctor. But what happened to Carl is he got married, he had children, he started working as a mechanic at 19 years of age. And when he first started working on cars, the car, he would work on the cars at the car parts store. Right there in the car parts store, he would work on people's cars. And eventually, uh, Carl was able to get to the place where he could have his own garage. And he began working on cars in the garage. And Carl was a car mechanic from the time that he was 19 years old to the time he was 44. He was a car mechanic for 25 years. But he always had this aspiration of something bigger in his life, and he decided at 34 years of age to go back to school at 34 years of age to get his degree in business. He figured, you know, my business in a car repair is doing really, really, really well. And he was being very successful, so he wanted to know how to manage it better, so he went and took a classes so he could get his bachelor's degree in business. And so then uh, he had one course left to take at the end, and it was biology. He had to have biology to graduate. Now, I want to remind you that Carl had this dream of being a doctor, and he had kind of put it on the back burner. So then he began taking this class. He was ambivalent. He was unsure. He was feeling uncomfortable because here he was sitting in a class with people who were a lot younger than he was. But as he took the biology class, he began to really enjoy biology. And uh, he really began to really sop it up and do really well. And so he got his degree in biology. And so he continued to run his car business, because I told you he went back to school at 34. He graduated from uh, his undergraduate degree at 38 years of age. So then he began going to Cleveland State University. And he began taking courses in the evening, early in the morning, to prepare him to get into medical school. This is an amazing story. So he starts getting these courses, and he gets through it. He passes all of his courses, and then he gets admitted to medical school in Northeastern Ohio Medical School. And he graduates from medical school at the age of 47 years old. And he talked about what it felt like sitting in these classes with people who were half his age. He said, I felt uncomfortable, but I would not allow myself to be intimidated. Amen. I would not allow myself to be intimidated. Carl learned how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I would, I would say to you that we can't go forward in life if we don't learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because all of us have had times when we've been uncomfortable. Carl was uncomfortable. He ran through his residency. He was uncomfortable. As a matter of fact, he finished this year, and now he's working at Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. That's where he's working at. But all of us have had experiences of being uncomfortable, and we had to learn how to get uncomfortable. Think about when you got married. Did any of you get sweaty palms? <laughs> Did any of you have sweat pouring down your face? Did any of you get nervous and say, what am I doing? But we did it. We learned to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Maybe you've taken a new job and you've never done this kind of work before. And they say, you are in charge. And you've never been in charge before. And then you learn how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. There's so many new things that we do that we have to learn how to get uncomfortable being, I don't know how to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Maybe you're teaching that new class you haven't taught in a long time, Major. He said, there I am, man. I'm teaching contracts. I haven't had contracts in years, but I'm teaching it. Decades. Decades. But we have to learn to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. All of us have found ourselves in that place. And so now here Peter is. He is learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. It is through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Peter, Peter is associating with the family and close friends of Cornelius. Peter then asked Cornelius why he sent him. And like Peter, Cornelius has had that same vision with the angel that I told you about. And in the narrative that is found in Acts chapter 10, Peter begins to give his sermon. 
by saying, here's the sermon that Peter begins to preach. Now he said he realizes that God does not show favoritism, but accepts people from every nation who fear him and do what is right. See, Peter had always believed that they were the select people, and like sometimes we believe that we are the select people and nobody else can be saved but us. That's what Peter thought. But our God is bigger than our view of God. Our God is bigger than our imagination of God. Our God is bigger than the boxes that we put God in. Our God is higher than the the vision that we have of God. Our God is longer than the vision that we have of God. Our God is deeper than the vision we have of God. Our God is wider than the vision that we have of God. And so Peter begins preaching this message of good news that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, that Jesus Christ had the Holy Spirit poured out on him, and he he went around doing good and healing all those who were under the power of evil because God was with him. And he says, and Peter says, you have heard about this resurrected Jesus. You have heard about this crucified Christ. You have heard about this Jesus that was raised from the dead after three days. I want to tell you about the Jesus that I met after he was resurrected. We sat down with him and drank water and we sat down with him and ate fish. We sat down with him around the fire. I want to tell you about this living Jesus. And this living Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one whom God has anointed as the judge of the living and the dead. This is the Jesus that was spoken of in the Old Testament prophets that was to come and that would bring forgiveness of sins through his name. This is that Jesus that has come for us. And so as Peter continues to, pre- continues to preach, we're told that the Holy Spirit was poured out. And they were speaking in tongues and they were praising God. Because Peter says, when he saw that, he says, what is to stop them from being baptized? Because they have received the same Holy Spirit that we have received. And of course, he could see that they too were children of God, that they too could receive the Holy Spirit, that they too could be saved. I want to say to you today, let us begin to reimagine our lives in Christ. That's what, it, that's what Peter had to do. Peter had to begin to reimagine his life in Christ because Peter was a bigot. He thought Christianity, he thought being saved by God was only for the Jews. It wasn't for the Gentiles. Let us begin to reimagine ourselves being transformed every day by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because many of us walk around with our hang-ups and our biases and our prejudices and and we're in our own little club. But let us ask God to help us to be transformed and may we be reimagined what it means to walk in Christ. Let us reimagine what it means to have newness of life in Christ. Let us imagine what it means to be a new creation in Christ. Let us imagine Imagine what it means to be able to accept people who come from the other side of the tract in Christ. People may walk in. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, about when we did the ice cream social last week. We don't know who's coming on these grounds. We have no idea who is going to walk on here. And, and it gives us a chance to Live out our faith in Christ. It gives us an opportunity to learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I believe that when Christ sent the Holy Spirit, that was the reason to give us the power so that we can learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And as long as God has called us to ministry here at New Life Fellowship, we're going to have to learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. When God is speaking to you and he wants you to talk to that person that you don't want to speak to, you're going to have to learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. When God lays a burden on your heart for ministry and you don't want to do it and you want somebody else to do it, You know, we do a lot of things to push them off to other people because we are uncomfortable. Someone says, I'm uncomfortable. Well, uncomfortable isn't a test of whether or not we should do something. I'm uncomfortable standing up here. Anytime God calls us to a big task, we're uncomfortable because we wonder, are we sufficient for the day? But I want you to know through the power of the Spirit, (laughs) amen, 
That's what happened to, to, to Peter through the power of the Spirit. Peter was being transformed all along because, you know, you read it later on in Galatians. He's hanging out with Gentiles. And, Peter, and Paul's having to call him out. He says, Peter, you're a hypocrite. When the Jews are not here, you behave in one way, uh, and you eat with Gentiles, and you enjoy fellowship with Gentiles. But when the Jews come, you draw back like you don't know them. What we need to be is transformed every day, and we cannot do it in our own power. That is the message of the gospel, folks. We can't do it in our own power. Only God can change us. Only God can transform us. Christianity is not a self-help religion. It's a religion where we're broken. It's a religion where we're bare. It's a religion where we're naked. It's a religion where we're fallible. It's a religion where we can't hardly take the next step. But it's only by the power and the spirit of Jesus Christ that we are able to go forward. It's the only way. It's the only way. So it's important for us to become comfortable. Comfortable with being uncomfortable. Why? Because God's got the Holy Spirit. God's got the power. We can step out. We can go forth. We don't need to be afraid. As Katie said, God is with us. God is with us. If we remember God is with us, it's okay to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because God will make a way. Amen. Why don't we stand? I have to stand. <laughs> it's not about me. It's about Jesus. I'm going to stand. Stand for Jesus.
was your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. God, thank you for the blessings you've given us. Please open our eyes and open our hearts to everything that you present to us. Through your Holy Spirit, let us be a pouring out of your love. Amen. Amen. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. One more time, then. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever everyone for that and um, I just wanted to say I really need somebody who knows how to sew is there anyone who knows how to sew nobody in the whole church knows how to sew who I know Randy does yeah you know how to Carrie knows how to sew yes okay so Carrie you're on because we need costumes for the Christmas musical and those costumes are the regular costumes for every Christmas musical so I want them to look good and then we can use them year after year you know wise men Mary Joseph the regulars I also need yeah the regs <laughs> I also need somebody who wants to be Joseph and who can sing it's a big bill but I already have a, uh, somebody who's going to be Mary, right, Jessica? 